Let's talk about DeepSeek because it is mind-blowing and it is shaking this entire industry to its core. The what an incredibly exciting time to be alive. I mean, really, if you take a step back, during our lifetimes, we saw computers learn to talk to each other, the internet. And now we're in a race to see who can make the machines wake up first. And race is the right word here. Many people way smarter than I have claimed that this AI race is similar to the space race of the 1960s. And we may have just had our Sputnik moment. And that's where DeepSeek comes into this story. Now, probably a week ago, you've never heard of this company, but now it's everywhere over the news. And the story of DeepSeek starts with this guy, its founder, Liang Wengfeng. They started out as a quant hedge fund, actually one of the largest in China, but then they decided to go all in on developing new AI models. And just like OpenAI, their mission is to bring AGI into the real world. AGI is artificial general intelligence. It's the holy grail for AI companies. Now here's what really has tech investors shaking right now. DeepSeek's R1 is almost as good, if not a little bit better than OpenAI's O1 model, but they trained it at 3% of the cost. Now it's hard to exactly verify that, and it's not entirely unheard of for China to misreport data. And one of the companies that provides training data, Scale AI, recently said to CNBC that he doesn't think that it's possible that they trained on that low of hardware. But regardless, this does challenge OpenAI's dominance. And it also challenges Nvidia needing to give so much compute, which is why as I'm filming this, the stock is plummeting. In fact, it's leading to the greatest market loss in history. The stock is almost down 17% today, which may be making it a buy opportunity. We'll get to that in a moment. So what am I doing? Well, first I'm studying what each business is doing. This is a key component of flank investing. By studying companies, we can learn a lot and it can make us better investors and it can make us better in our day jobs. So the two things that really stuck out to me as I deep dove deep seek, huh. first they have an interesting hiring approach. Instead of looking for computer scientists who have AI experience in the field already, they're hiring right out of PhD programs and they're choosing people with a lot of passion over people with credentials. So that's an interesting way to go about it. And then because of trade restrictions, they are limited purportedly in how much hardware they can actually use to train these models. And that's another thing that would be really cool if true they're really being a scrappy startup. But then their go-to-market is also just as interesting to me. Remember, both companies, OpenAI and DeepSeek, have the goal of artificial general intelligence, but they're going about it in two different ways. OpenAI is using a lot of compute to build their models, and they're also building their models kind of in secrecy. And so when they're releasing new models, they're going for the quickest jumps in compute, whereas DeepSeek has an open source model. And by using an open source model, they're hoping that they become the industry norm for which models all of their applications are built on top of. It's like back in the 90s, if you had a closed source internet and an open source internet, which one would win? Well, we know that the modern internet was built on open source technology. And that's where I found Professor Yan LeCun. He's Meta's chief AI scientist. And he said that it's not China's AI that is surpassing the US but rather that open source models are surpassing proprietary ones. And I think that's really interesting, but it doesn't really explain why Meta's Llama model isn't very good, at least yet. Maybe they got something. I know Meta's been making huge investments in their compute, so perhaps they're waiting on that, I don't know. So on top of just studying the crap out of what's coming out of this, from a story perspective, the second thing I'm doing is I'm doing a rain dance, hoping that this continues to crash the market. Remember, this is what makes us excited as intelligent investors. We will be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. And the stock market is at crazy high valuations right now. Take a look at this chart. It shows just really how high valuations are right now in the US. And it's looking at how far the US stock market has gotten in front of other equity markets across the world. And then if you look at the Buffett indicator, which is my preferred metric of looking at where valuations stand at any point in time, we're continuing to stay in overvalued territory. So I'm hoping so hard that this continues to crash the market. I don't care if the market goes down 80%. That would be lovely. I would be able to find companies that I love at 90 to 95% off. And that's a really funny thing about public market investing. The stock market is the only store that when things go on sale, everyone runs out of the store. And so that's where I'll be. I'll be leaning in a lot this week, just looking and trying to see if I find a company that's gotten absolutely smoked that still has a great story around it. If you want to see my analysis as I'm writing it, you can check out flankinvesting.com because the YouTube algorithm doesn't really like single company analysis, which I understand, but that's what we love at Flank. We apply a Buffett style approach to everything we do when we study companies. So if you want to come see what we're all about, there'll be a link to the platform in the description below, as well as a link to our free discord. I really hope to see you there. That's all for today. We'll see you in the next one.